Hello, my name is Chandler Wells. I am a senior at Calamarine High School of Health Sciences, and this is my application for the 2021 STEM Oxygen Scholarship, sponsored by AT&T. Today, I'm here to discuss the human relationship with the environment. This year, I undertook a study that investigates an invasive algae species, the starry stonewort, and a specific mitigation effort. So let's start with the history of the species. Since the beginning of time, the starry stonewort resided in its native range of Eurasia, occupying freshwater lakes. Things got a little messy in the 1970s. Transoceanic cargo ships unintentionally transported the species from its native range across the Atlantic to the St. Lawrence River, which is where it was discovered by Canadian ecologists. Five years later, the Great Lakes were invaded. The starry stonewort very quickly began its course, invading one region after another to blame ecological hitchhiking by the means of recreational boating. Public boat launches aid in the transfer of invasive vegetation and other species, which is why in recent years, water quality specialists have pushed for boat inspections. Despite these efforts, the starry stonewort is a successful invader. It reproduces asexually, so when it's robust bulbils, the white star-shaped reproductive structures escape detection they remain viable, surviving and capable of asexual reproduction for extended periods of time. The starry stonewort is a pioneer species thriving in ecosystems disturbed by flooding, drought, or nutrient-limited conditions. As a result, it outcompetes native aquatic plants such as the native chara that serve as essential shelter and spawning grounds for fish. So as the starry stonewort spreads, suitable fish habitat shrinks. To address the starry stonewort invasion, preventative treatment measures are imperative. This means boaters are responsible for proper cleaning of equipment. Over the last few months, I conducted research on a preventative cleaning measure, a saltwater treatment. I collected bubble samples and subjected them to a 24-hour saltwater treatment of three concentrations, 5 PSU, 20, and 35. PSU being the practical salinity unit, one gram of salt, Per kilogram of water. As a freshwater species, algae are biologically equipped to conserve salt in their bodily fluid, which makes salt an effective measure of extreme dehydration, leading to cell death. To measure their viability, determining which bulbils were still alive after submersion in salt water, I soaked the bulbils in a triphenyl tetrazoleum chloride TTC solution, which is a redox indicator chemical frequently used to observe the germination of seeds. With the presence of red precipitate, bulbils were determined to be viable and alive. Those without the red dye, remaining a whitish color, lacked these oxidizing enzymes and were not undergoing cellular respiration. They were considered dead. Looking at the images of my results, following the submersion in a TTC solution, the control group and 5 PSU group are comprised of dark red bulbils whereas the 20 PSU and 35 PSU groups are comprised of white bulbils. As expected, the control group yielded 100% viable bulbils and the largest salt concentration of 35 PSU yielded 0% viable bulbils. There is an obvious trend suggesting that a higher concentration of salt results in a lower percentage of viable bulbils. Therefore, I can conclude that a saltwater treatment hinders bulbil survival. Applying my study to my community, this summer I will be assisting my local Clean Boats, Clean Waters program, sharing my knowledge of invasive species with boaters coming in and out of a heavily utilized boat launch. Here I will address the importance of proper cleaning with measures such as a saltwater submersion. It is imperative that boaters are aware of how to reduce the spread of invasive species. On a worldwide scale, the introduction of aquatic invasive species is a dangerous threat to biodiversity and freshwater ecosystems represent hotspots of endangerment. Many of the world's freshwater fish, like the colossal catfish and Chinese paddlefish, as well as freshwater plants, such as water lilies, are vulnerable to extinction. I aspire to be a part of this community of brilliant scholars working to restore the health of our environment, which is why I will be studying freshwater and marine sciences at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. I hope this gave you some insight about the threats of aquatic invasive species and ways we are capable of solving these issues. Thanks for watching!